Hi everyone, this is Davina with Radio Naira on Triangle Real Talk. Hope you are all doing well today. Spring is here and I thought this was a perfect time to get into, you know, talking about health and wellness. So today we have a very special guest. She is Somia Raghav, a very well-known yoga instructor in the RTP. And I am honored to be interviewing her because... Yoga has usually been popularized in the West in recent years, even though it was introduced by Indians. And she is one of the very popular and well-qualified yoga masters right here at our doorstep in the RTP. So take advantage of this and let's learn from so uh, Somia Raghav. How are you, Somia? Thank you. Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you so much, Davina. And thank you, Radio Naira, having me for having me here on the show. And I am honored, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's very important for us to spread the message because there's a yoga studio everywhere at every corner, and yet the wider population does not have the knowledge that yoga masters from our community are right here, you know. So let's get into this. Why did you start practicing yoga? When did you start? Okay. I was... Um pulled to a yoga studio by one of my aunts and that's how my yoga journey began. I was uh, carrying my second child then. So prenatal yoga is where I started off my yoga journey with. Oh, wow. And very, dear about, very dear to my heart. But I used to practice yoga before that, but more like an aerobic uh, exercise, not like yoga. Yoga has to happen to a person. So that happened to me and I'm fortunate that happened while I was carrying my second child. And yeah, here I am. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So what year was that? How many years ago was that? 14 years ago. 14 years. Okay. Um, and where did you do your yoga teacher training? All right. So as people think that, you know, the, the notion is you need to do your teacher certification and then start teaching. Mm -hmm. it's actually not so. Yoga ha is more of an experience. So you train with your master or your teacher for a good number of years and then you're ready to teach. I was initiated by one of my teachers back in India. At that point, I didn't have any certification as such. It was just, just purely based on experience, practicing in, under two different amazing teachers. Mm -hmm. I started off my yoga journey with an Iyengar teacher. Uh, his name is uh, Arun, Arun sir. And today, where I, wherever I am is because of him, and I'm totally indebted to uh, you know his uh, classes uh, while I was carrying at that time. And then I went on to... Uh, learn under different other teachers and one of the teachers her name is also Saumya she initiated me into teaching and that's how my teaching started I actually started substituting for her classes whenever she was away and uh, the very uh, trust that she had in me the faith that she had in me that I could uh, teach a class or instruct a class meant a lot and that actually sparked that you know curiosity and the intention to learn more, to understand more. And then the, later on, I did my certification. Okay. And after coming to US, I did my certification at Republic of Yoga under Nicole. She's also another master yogi. So I've been pretty, pretty uh, fortunate to have some amazing teachers in my life. You're very highly accomplished, it sounds like. You know, so much training and uh, a great foundation. Um, and, you know, a lot of us are confused. I know I am because there are so many different schools of yoga, uh, different styles of yoga. So which one do you have most experience with? All right. I teach Vinyasa Krama Yoga. So I basically teach flow yoga, which is a Hatha Yoga practice, also an integration of Ashtanga Yoga. So like you said, there are different schools of yoga. So first, let's understand what they are. And uh, I also come from the Iyengar school. However, I'm not certified, but I'm a certified Hatha Yoga teacher. But you got to try to know it. Okay. Each studio is different. Each teacher is different. It mostly depends upon authenticity. Like, you know, how many years of experience does the teacher have? So go to their classes. They will have a different outlook and a different perspective. And then each of us are in different phases of our life. Someone who is extremely physically fit but cannot uh, you know, enjoy a yoga class because it needs a flexibility and uh, the movements are very different. And someone who is not very, very physically fit needs a slower, a beginner level paced class. So they're different. They're, they're not only the styles of yoga, the schools of yoga, but also the different styles and different uh, teachers offer different styles. So uh, if you ask me, 
you would i mean if it is a if it is a beginner or not a physically fit person or not knows yoga properly or not whichever studio you go to try the beginner class mm-hmm. now once you are completely into a, a yoga practice for like over 6 months or over 1 year then you can just walk into any class you have your own way of enjoying the class it just doesn't even depend upon the sequence it just, because you have understood that it is you and your mat to get there you need consistency you need a consistent consistent practice so when you practice when you look out for different uh, studios or different teachers look out for authentic teachers not an rvt 200 or a 500 it's about how many years they have practiced how many years they have taught based on that you can you know um uh, checklist you can have a checklist of all of that and then actually reach out that way okay i like the way you said it's about discipline and it's uh, consistency and it's about you and your mat but it takes years to get there you know so how do you know that you've taught a successful class i know i've done some of your classes and you've been very patient so how do you know you've taught an, a a good class maybe silence in the end just absolute silence in the end after they get up from their yoga nidra and they're not even in a mood to even talk because there has been an energy shift so you know you can have 10 or 20 kids, 20 students in the class of practitioners i call them because i myself am a student so i i don't like to call my i i like to call them practitioners so you cannot please each one of them it's impossible you will have some of them who didn't and that is those are your teachers so those the ones who are not happy are your teachers and the ones who are happy will actually motivate you and to uh, you know help you keep going so in my experience of the years that i have taught there are people who will come up front and tell you that it was a fantastic class they even uh-huh. hugged me sometimes you know and send me texts beautiful right. words and some people just do not talk they are in a different zone but they show up to your class right that's what actually matters and what is your greatest strength how has um yoga helped you become a more effective human being and a teacher resilience to be able to connect connect better in inward so outward connection is what we all the minute we say connection we talk about you know how to connect with people how to call how to talk and how to mm-hmm. uh converse but it's right. about the conversation with your own self it's the connection inward where you're okay because everything should not be perfect the minute everything is perfect that means there's something wrong there so to understand that it takes years and yoga practice yoga uh practicing more than teaching mm-hmm. has taught me to constantly be curious to constantly learn so there's never an ending to learning so mm-hmm. you're constantly learning the same asanas feel so different every single time you practice Mm-hmm. and uh, that physical practice is what brings in the uh, physical strength along with mm-hmm. a lot of will power and mental strength so and right. yeah okay anybody for that matter right would be incomplete without their practice so so am i mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now tell us how your classes are structured do you have big groups small groups what do you uh, prefer do you do one on one coaching i do all three <laughs> I offer uh, occasionally every month I have at least one workshop so that would be kind of a lot of people who come in during that time my regular class is usually a small group okay. depends upon how many turn in but I do have regular classes okay. and um, I do offer one on ones especially therapy I have a masters in uh, yoga therapy uh, so I offer therapy and prenatal I am a child birth educator and I specialize in prenatal yoga so I uh, teach prenatal yoga in a group setting as well as one on one so it's uh, everything almost everything that you mentioned very nice so it's everything so wide range um what is this chakra system that we all hear about so much you know in this new age environment we live in people are talking about the chakra system different colors um tell us a little about that and how does that fit into the practice of yoga Okay so this is not an easy question it and it takes a lot to answer this but i will try to put it in a nutshell okay so chakra chakra then the word chakra means wheel mm-hmm. so a disc 
So chakra means wheel in Sanskrit chakra means and in English it means wheel or a disc. So we have these energy centers in the body. Now basically what is the whole idea of understanding this before that we have to understand how the body functions. Right. So we all have a life, correct? Right. So that's called the life force or the prana. This prana is where is this prana? Is it in the heart? Is it in the head? Where is it? Where is this prana? So this prana is moving throughout the body. And for this prana to move, where is this prana moving throughout the body? Through these energy channels, which are called as nadis. Okay. The nadis are these uh, energy uh, channels in which the prana moves. We have 72,000 nadis in our body. 36,000 male nadis and 36,000 female nadis, the right and the left sides. So when they come together, so we have the ida and the pingala, which is the main nadi for the 36,000 male nadi is the pingala nadi. And for the other 36 female nadis is the ida nadi. So the male and the female energies in the body. These two go up in a serpentine fashion, which comes up, up the wood comes up here, beginning from the root, the base of the spine. Mm -hmm. And the place where the male and the female meet, this meeting point, that's the chakra. So we have seven main chakras in the whole body. It's uh, actually theoretically, some say it's six and some seven. So seven is the main, the, the crown chakra is considered to be the most uh, divine one. Mm -hmm. And root to crown, we have seven chakras aligned, aligned with the spine. It's aligned with the spine. And these chakras govern the entire, the functioning of the whole body. So it makes sure that when we, when we have balanced chakras, the body is in harmony. The energies in the body is, is in harmony. When there's an imbalance, people start seeing different changes in the body. Example, lifestyle diseases or, you know, stress, tension, hypertension, all sorts of issues. This mm -hmm. is an imbalance of the chakra system itself. And uh, coming down to how it affects, how is it impact, how does it impact on your uh, chakras while you practice yoga, when you practice yoga is... Yoga is a very divine practice. So, like I said in the beginning, yoga has to happen to you. It's like when you pray, not everybody prays. So when you pray, so you don't have to sit down in a place and pray, right? You can stand, you can just be in a space and get into that zone. Right. And when we pray, there's something happening in the body that's a very divine energy shift in the body. That's exactly what happens when we are practicing yoga. So, asana practice is only one limb. Yoga in, in general means a beautiful umbrella of eight limbs. So you imagine you have eight spikes which holds an umbrella. Yoga, asana practice is only one limb. And there are other limbs also which actually also means being in yoga. That is fascinating because I had no idea about 72,000 energy points or whatever you just said, 36,000 and 36. That is absolutely fascinating. So yes, we should go into this in more detail later. Uh, maybe not right now, right here. But how do you stay up to date in the yoga industry? Like, is there some form of continuing education or what? Yeah, I mean, yeah. This uh, See, first thing is to call it an industry is a very sad thing. But thanks to the Westerners, they've made it an industry. And that's why everybody is practicing yoga. It's a $100 billion company today. And I'm uh, sorry, industry today. And... Uh, uh, Coming back to keeping yourself updated is actually in yoga you need to go backwards. You need to go into your ancient scriptures. Yoga is more of a theory actually. It is more mm -hmm. theory. You, we need to understand the sutras, the Patanjali Yoga Sutras to understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> to understand and to go deeper into our practice. So asana practice since I said, is, like I said, is just only one form, one limb of uh, the eight limbs of yoga. It is highly evolved. So we it's evolved from one human to the other, from one master to the other. So asana practice is something which does we should not stop you. This is not where you stop to mm -hmm. learn yoga. There's a lot more than that. So continuous education, we do have Yoga Alliance uh, providing a lot of certifications. But um, to me, I would go back to my ancient scriptures, refer all the relevant work like the Bhagavad Gita, the Sutras of Patanjali and uh, Giranda Samhita. So many other books, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, all of these are books which we need to dive in deeper and every single time you read the exact same chapter, you learn a new thing. Okay. Okay. But you also do the continuing education and all that if you have to. 
Yes, I am uh, currently pursuing my advanced training, so I'm going to be a 500 R Y T soon. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. That's so advanced, I, right? Yes, that's advanced. 500. Yeah. Um, you said something about prenatal yoga, and that's when you started, when you yourself were expecting. So, do you offer those classes now? I think you mentioned that you do, right? Yes. Yeah, it's ongoing. I have an ongoing class for group as well as, uh, of course, personal cl classes. This goes one on one, so I work with them according to their schedule. Right. Okay. Okay. And that particular class is completely based on uh, Ayangar Yoga, which is, <laughs> we use a lot of props, a lot of support, and uh, each trimester is different. So okay. the first trimester, the second trimester, and the third trimester are different practices. And uh, yeah, I work on that on that uh, philosophy uh, with my prenatals. So you said yoga has to happen to you. Uh, what is your message for other people in the community who are considering joining, but they don't know how to begin. What is your message to them about this? Again, you got to try it to know it. So go try a class and that's where your journey will begin. I haven't had met anybody who said I went to two classes. I didn't like it, and I, but they will go back after a few years. So it will happen. So yoga has to happen is where you will your your body will awaken you will understand the 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 beauty of connecting with your own body while you're in a yoga practice so that is what that is a space that yoga provides us it's like a boon you know it's mm -hmm. a boon to spend time with your own self mm -hmm. to talk it out with your own self and the wonderful things that happen during yoga nidra and we've heard some amazing stories very very transformational uh, in my own life in fact i've had some fantastic ideas and points during yoga nidra and during meditation right so since people are moving towards meditation my 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 first advice my suggestion to them would be try asana practice do your asana practice meditation will happen automatically because yoga is right. moving meditation okay okay so it's as much as connecting with your own body and then living the philosophy in daily life yes absolutely okay well, there's a lot to learn. That will happen. The living the philosophy in day-to-day -day life will naturally happen. It's very, it will happen very organically. We don't have to force being, you know, that's why I never, I don't call myself a yogini or a yogi. I don't call anybody a yogi because that life is there. I mean, people who are master yogis, they have lived a life of complete surrender, mm -hmm. which is very, very hard to find in, in today's life. No, practicing yoga on the mat doesn't make a person a yogi. It has a complete lifestyle. Right, right. And I think um, there's a book called The Autobiography of a Yogi. It's actually like nine or 12 years for that whole process, if you're that serious about it. But yes, uh, I think a lot of us are dealing with the here and now in daily life. And this is the best way we can bring it into our own daily life and practice. Absolutely. Anyway, it's been great learning all this from you, and I hope to spread your message to our community and beyond through this program. And thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, namaste. Namaste. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>